Hey guys, welcome to my channel in Pythonista and in this particular video, I'm going to show how you can use the concept of XPath for scraping web pages using Python and I'll also show you the special situations in which we might actually need the, this particular concept because it might help us save a lot of effort and time while scraping the web pages. So yeah, so that is what we're going to do in this particular video. So without any delay, let's get started. Okay, so let us talk a bit about XPath first. So XPath stands for XML Path Language, which is actually a query language for selecting nodes from any XML document. Now, if you do not know about XML document, then here is something for you. Well, XML stands for Extensible Markup Language, which is a bit like your hypertext markup language, which is HTML, but there is a very distinct difference between the two. HTML has a predefined set of tags which have a special meaning. For example, you have a body tag or you have a head tag or you have a paragraph tag. So all those tags have a special meaning for your browser, right? But for XML, there is no such thing. Um, you can give any name to your tags and they do not have any special meaning there, right? So the design goal of XML documents actually is that they emphasize on simplicity, generality and usability across the internet. That's why you can use any names for your tags. And XML uh, nowadays is generally used for transportation of the data from one web service to another. So that is one of the main uses of it. So now coming back to XPath, XPath is a query language for XML documents. And the special thing to note here is that it is used for selecting nodes. Now you might be thinking that what are these nodes? What is this node term here, right? So, well, actually you can think of any XML document or even any HTML document like a tree. Now why I'm saying that is because if you try to see this particular XML document, you have a tag called movie database in which you have multiple movie tags. Then in each movie, you have a title tag, year tag, directed by tag and so on. So in this way, we are creating a nested structure. And if you try to visualize it a tree, we can. So we have a movie database tag in which we can have multiple movies. In each movie, we have a title, year, directed by and so on. Let's say in the cast, we have multiple actors whose first name and last name are the different tags inside each actor. So we can think of it like this, like in cast, we have an actor in which we have first name and the last name, right? So this nesting of the tags allows you to visualize the documents, XML documents or the HTML documents like trees and that's the reason why we have the concept of nodes in the trees, right? So all these tags, all these tag elements are actually the nodes of your tree. So what we are referring by nodes here is those same nodes which you have in your XML document. When you think of it like a tree. So the thing here is that HTML also can be visualized like a tree and can be parsed like a tree and then we can um, go through it in by using any library like beautiful soup or any other library, right? So let's say you have a body tag in which you have multiple divs. So you can visualize it like this, like in body you have multiple divs. Now in first div, let's say you have h1, p, p and hr. So you can visualize it like this. Let's say in the second div, you have a ul tag in which you have multiple li tags. So you can visualize it like a tree, so on, right? So yeah, so HTML documents or the XML documents, all of them can be visualized like a tree and the XML path syntax can be used for querying and selecting some particular nodes which follow the pattern specified by the XPath syntax to select some particular nodes. So that is the concept behind XPath. And now let me show you a few examples so that we can understand the XPath syntax a bit. So we are not gonna go in much detail about the XPath syntax itself because in this video, our main aim is to learn how to use XPath for web scraping, right? So let me just give you a very brief um, let's say a refresher about XPath syntax. So let's say I have an XML document in which this is the code I have. So I have a bookstore tag at the root in which I have multiple book tags in which I have title and the price tag like this, right? So this is um, some website called codebeautify.org slash XPath tester in which I am testing out this X XML and XPath expression. So the thing is that you can just put slash, which means that you want to search from the root of your tree and I will do bookstore. So what it will do is that it will search from the root for the bookstore. So do we have any bookstore from the root? Yes, we have a bookstore tag. So that's why if I just do test XPath, I will get the complete bookstore. 
now let's say in the bookstore i want to get all the books that we have so for that you will do slash book so let us test this expert so look at that we are getting all the books inside the bookstore now let's say you want to get only that book whose id is let's say two so what you will do here is that you will just put um, some square bracket in which you will put at the rate id equal to two so what i am saying here is that when you put an at the rate and some attribute name then you are referring to a particular attribute inside your book tag in this case and you are saying that find all the all those books book tags in which the id is two so let us see if we get the book element with the id two or not so test x path and look at that we are getting only that book whose id is two now let's say i want to get only the price of that book whose id is two so i can simply do slash price and let me just test the xpath and look at that i'm getting only the price so this is how um, actually xpath works and if you want to learn this in a bit more detail then you can go to this particular link which is the xpath syntax on w3schools.com and you can go through this particular tutorial to understand about the xpath syntax in a bit more detail so yeah so this is all about xpath that we need to know in order to um, implement web scraping over it so let's get started with the web scraping part for the example purpose only i'm gonna go with this particular web page which is a wikipedia page which is outline of the marvel cinematic universe well actually i was going through this page a few hours ago when i thought of using it for showing you the xpath demo so the thing is that on this page there is this table of feature films of the marvel cinematic universe so what i wanted to do actually was that i wanted to get the list of all the links to the wikipedia page of these films so for example this is the first column in the first column there is a list of all the films so for iron man it is actually a link to the iron man 2008 film wikipedia page so i wanted to get this particular link i wanted to have this link okay similarly i want to get the captain america the first avenger and so on so i wanted to get all the links in the first column only so that was my main goal for web scraping from this particular page now the thing is that I can use beautiful soup for doing that, right? But there is an even more compact and easier way to do the same thing by using the concept of XPath. And that's why we have this video, right? So let's see how we can the, use the concept of XPath here for doing the scraping of only the first column of any given table. So I think that will be a good starting point. So this is the web inspector for inspecting the different elements of this particular web page. You can open it by doing Control shift i or you can just right click and click on inspect in your browser so once you have done that now you will have to go to up the particular element that you're looking for so you can just click here to select an element and now you can go to that particular element so let's say iron man so this is the html code for this particular element okay so now what i want is i want to search this element in my complete html tree you can say so we can we are going to use the concept of xpath here so what you can do is that you just right click here and then you go to copy and then you click on copy xpath so this will now contain the xpath so let me just paste it here for you so look at that this is the xpath of that element now if you want to understand this xpath a bit now then let me just explain it to you a bit so here um, double slash means that you do not want to start from the root node you want to start from any particular position in the tree asterisk means that in this case this is the complete thing here asterisk means that find any tag whose id is mw hyphen context hyphen text and in that tag go to the first div go to its second table because you have put a two here go to that table's body then go to the third row of that table then go to its th go to its i and go to its a now if you try to see we are in i we are in a then we have i we have th we have tr right a i th tr it is a third row so it is three two one right so this is a third row the iron man one and then we have to go to the body before that we have to go to the second table before that we have to go to the div before that so this is the complete xpath syntax that we have here for that particular element that is the thing the xpath is unique for each element in your tree right so now the thing is that i want to find all the um, elements all such elements right so i want to get a generic xpath 
So let me first show you how to search by X path on the Chrome inspector. You have to just paste it here. You just click Control F, um, and then you can get this particular input element where you can search for any X path. So let me paste my X path here and look at that. I get this one, right? So this is the X path that I copied for this element, and now I'm putting it in the search bar of my Chrome inspector, and I'm getting that element. Now let me replace three the tr3 the third row with the fourth row let's see what happens look at that now i'm getting the incredible hug so this is the variable this is what i want to make variable you're getting four i go to five i get iron man two right i do six i make tr6 i get the sixth film so in this way we are getting all the um, elements that we actually need if we just keep on changing this particular value of tr we are changing the index of the row that we want to select so now let me show you the power of xpath which is you can just replace this integer with asterisk and what will happen is that it will accept any value here now it is as it is going to accept any value here you will get all the values filled here like 1 2 3 4 5 6 so in this way if you just go you can see that you are getting 23 search results right we are getting 23 search results so let me go through all of them one by one Look at that. We are getting Incredible Hulk, Iron Man 2, Thor, and yeah. So look at that. We have created a single search expression, which is giving me 23 search results. And all of them are the first column of this table. So in this way, I have got a very nice XPath query, which can find me all the elements in one go, right? So this is the power of XPath syntax that you can write very compact expressions for searching some pattern in your HTML document. And that is where XPath comes handy. When you have a special pattern of different elements in your HTML document, then you might think of using XPath there instead of um, going with the old beautiful soup way. Now I said old beautiful soup way because beautiful soup doesn't support the concept of XPath. So we will have to use something different, okay? So yeah, so let now let me show you how you can implement this XPath thing in Python. So as I told you before, you cannot use beautiful soup because beautiful soup doesn't support this XPath thing. So who supports that? It is LXML. So LXML is actually a third party library which can help you to um, parse your HTML document or any kind of XML document and then you can search any node in it using the XPath syntax. So what you need to do is you have to just do pip install LXML and it will install the LXML library for you and once that is done you have to do from LXML import HTML. So that is what we need. Also I will need the request library because I have to get the HTML data of that web page as well. So now let me just copy this particular URL of my HTML web page. So this is the URL. And now let me send a request to this particular page. So request start get URL and I will get the request now. So now as I've got the response, we can see it's 200, which means that the response, um, which means the request was successful. So now let me create a parsed tree for my HTML document. So what I'm going to do here is that I'm going to do tree is equal to um, it's going to be HTML dot from string. So HTML dot from string is a function which takes your HTML content and it will parse that HTML content and it will create a tree out of it and it will return you the root of that tree. So I will just doing I will just be doing response dot content and now what I have been returned is actually the root of my tree. So it is saying that I've got element HTML at some particular position. So HTML, as you know, is the HTML tag is the root of any HTML document. That's why I have got the root of my HTML tree, the parsed tree that I've got. Now what I want is I want to do some XPath searching here. So what is my XPath? This is my XPath. So let me just copy it and I will have to do tree dot XPath in which I will have to pass my XPath. Okay, now you can see a problem here. We are using double quotes and then double quotes are in my XPath syntax as well. So that is a very common problem and the solution is that you can use 
um, either triple quotes or you can use single quotes outside and then you can keep the double quotes inside so that will also work so now let's just run it look at that we are getting all the elements which are matching with this particular x path so as you can see i have replaced this number after tr with asterisk that's why i'm getting all the elements all the values in the first column of my table so now what i need to do is that i can just keep it as um e l e m e n t s let me call them elements or yeah so let us call them elements so now let me go to elements zero so this is the element zero which is an anchor tag as you can see element a which is the a tag now if i want to get what is the information that it contains you can either do dot text it will sh show you iron man because it is written um iron man here right or you can do a double t r i b the attribute dictionary so in the attribute dictionary as you can see you have the href value of your anchor tag which is actually the link that is what i actually need and the title of the movie so these are two things that we can get so i only want href so yeah that is all i want right so in this way i am getting the link so yeah so that is what uh, i wanted so let me just collect those links for all the movies that i want so links is equal to um let me just set the base url as the wikipedia url so this is my base url and now let me write a very nice list comprehension here which is base url plus um let's say element dot attribute href for element in elements that's it this is a very simple list comprehension that we have written here and that's it now let me just do links and here you go i have got the links to all the wikipedia pages of all the movies all the feature films in the marvel cinematic universe so that was the main aim that i was looking for and i got that so yeah so i hope that you got a gist of how you can use the concept of xml and the xpath for web scraping and how it can help in some situations where you are looking for a particular pattern and according to that pattern you can easily find a compact xpath query for yourself and then that can help you to do everything in very less line little uh, very less number of lines of code right so that is what the aim of this video was and that is what we have successfully done so i hope the concept was clear if you still have any doubts you can put them in the comment section below that's it from this video thanks for watching